Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Warzone Mobile is here, and with this, you want to make sure you're dropping in with the right settings when you go to dive into your first couple of games, right? And within Warzone Mobile, there's actually a lot you can do to fully customize your settings, regardless of what device or input you're playing on, whether you're playing on a tablet, a phone with the actual touchscreen controls, or even with a controller. And so today we're going through all of the best settings you want to be using. As we go through everything, if you do enjoy the video or if you find it helpful, do me a favor, drop a like on it. It's always really appreciated. And if you are new to the channel or you simply have not subscribed yet, every Every single day i got you covered with all things going on in call of duty whether it's news updates tips patch notes meta breakdowns like i said it's all right here so feel free to hit that sub button and turn on those post notifications so when you first dive into warzone mobile of course in the top right you're gonna have your settings tab and i figure as we go through this starting off first with the controls it's easiest if i go through and just hide my face cam so that you guys don't have to see that blocking anything you can get some clear concise breakdowns of everything the first setting or the first menu you're gonna see here is your controls where you can actually fully customize your hud and this is one of the awesome elements of warzone mobile so obviously if you're playing with touchscreen controls, you're going to have a ton of different things you can end up uh, adjusting here. Positioning is going to be really preference based, you know, valuing the things that you are constantly doing, whether it be reloading, whether it be sprinting, ADSing, whatever the case may be. So you can obviously move these around as you want to fit wherever it's going to be the most convenient for you to touch. This really is not uh, a situation where there's a best layout or a best setup for your HUD. It's all about what is really comfortable for you. Now, if you're playing touchscreen, obviously adjust this as needed. Wherever you want your move stick to be, you know, put that where it's going to be comfortable for your thumbs to be able to hit or for your fingers to tap the ADS button or the reload button or your streaks button or whatever the case may be. Uh, that said, if you're playing on controller, for the most part, you don't want all this jumble on your screen. And personally, I am a controller player. So what I've gone through actually is uh, made my own custom HUD setup here that is basically hiding as much as I possibly can, right? So I go through here and with this custom HUD, everything that's red here is hidden. So these buttons are not gonna show up. Usually you'd have the big analog move stick here, your ammo option here. So I've gone through and I've hidden all these by enabling that obviously. And so they're not showing up on my screen. What I do see is my weapon at the bottom here. I also see my ammo count and my weapons in the bottom right alongside my grenades and whatnot. I see my streaks and my field upgrades on the right side. I've also, if I go through and move this down, got my kill feed up here to the left. Obviously in my squad widget in the top left my mini map in the top right somewhat basic there and that's really convenient for me now on top of that they also have a bunch of different presets that you can go through and use as well which is really cool so they've got different ones for default they've got pro loadouts and then they even have some that are meant for controller as well the default controller loadout gives you a much cleaner hud that's obviously not uh nearly as cluttered doesn't have as many uh options on it so while this is mostly preference based i would recommend going through hiding things you don't necessarily need or lowering the visibility on them as well perhaps the size too but also going through finding some presets here then just adjusting the specific things that work well for your style of gameplay obviously this is going to be different depending on the size of the screen you're playing on personally i've got an ipad 12.9 inch one uh so it's a larger screen but if you're playing on a smaller phone you might need to adjust things a little bit more there just to make sure that you actually are not you know hitting an incorrect button or an incorrect input at a bad time in game so that's something i would recommend spending a decent amount of time on so that you got that perfected a couple of other settings on this first menu weapon trigger i like to have this as manual i just like to be in full control of when my weapon's going to shoot and when it's not the auto fire might lead to scenarios where you're just going to end up firing your weapon accidentally because someone walks into your crosshair and that's not maybe where you wanted to shoot or when you wanted to shoot and i also have custom uh automations there as well we go into our gameplay settings here and there's a lot going on here so again i've got the custom setups weapon auto pickup i do have that on on it just makes it a tad bit easier easier to go through and loot things. I also have the auto pickup starter handgun on there as well. The weapon auto equip I have off just because if I am picking something up, I don't necessarily want that out right away. Maybe I'm in a close range situation. I already have an SMG in my hands. I don't want to have this turned on and then it switches out from my SMG. Someone pushes me and I've got a sniper. I've got an LMG out, right? So I do keep that on off there. And then I leave everything else as is there. Uh, turn to damage assist. If you turn this one on here, it's basically going to uh, uh, turn the recent source of incoming damage more precisely so it's going to turn uh towards what's shooting you a little bit easier it just depends on if you like that control being done automatically or if you like to manually do that personally i prefer my aim to be 
all me. I don't really want the game to be adjusting things like that for me because it's going to throw you off unless you're super used to it. So I personally leave that as off, but that's something you may want to look into and see how it affects you, especially if you are a touchscreen control player. Loot auto pickup. Again, I have that on on auto mantle. I absolutely turn this on off or I turn it off rather. That's the better way of saying that because words, right? Uh, just to make things a lot simpler across the board. Uh, I don't want to be auto mantling over a wall when I'm in the middle of a fight that's going to cause me to stop shooting. It could put me in a bad spot. I want to be in full control of that as well parachute this is another big one manual you want to do this by yourself now keep in mind you might need to prep sometimes if you're playing like bluetooth on controller there is some input delay you don't want to be crashing into the ground and dying to fall damage I definitely have not done that already. Uh, but with this, you don't want to be doing the parachute auto deploy because it's going to pull your chute constantly when you're jumping out of windows off of rooftops, and it's going to take you longer to get into the action and get to the loot early game as well. So just doing this by yourself, manually choosing when you want to pull your chute is way more convenient and for a much more aggressive play style. Uh, climb stairs buttons, I keep on off, auto crouch off, turn corners assistance I also have on off again I just want the full control of my gameplay there and auto equip armor you definitely don't want that because the second you pick up armor you're gonna start plating that could also screw you up if you're in the middle of looting bodies but there's still uh you know fighting going on and you happen to run over some plates it's gonna start doing that input right away could mess you up in game Virtual stick behavior, leave on analog. Sprint to stand. Obviously, if you're crouched, you want to go into that direct sprint. That'll allow that to happen there. I also have a fixed camera rotation mode. If you are playing with touchscreen controls, that'll make things a little bit more, uh, you know, precise to what you're doing on your screen at a time. Uh, I pretty much leave all the default settings for the rotation on here. Weapon mount exit delay, I do change over to short, although that actual delay animation doesn't seem like it's all that different depending on the settings that you have there, I won't lie. Uh, going down into combat here, as we we talked about earlier i've got weapon trigger on manual fire auto fire on objects it would be something that you could actually go through and customize if you wanted to personally i just have it on enemy only uh auto fire range limiter i just don't have on because i don't have the auto fire obviously uh you can also adjust your single shot fire behavior if you want to make it a little bit more unique to your style of play aim down sights when firing obviously you probably want to have that on you don't want to be hip firing at long distances of course uh snap ads fire button to finger you could also do that if you are a touchscreen player that that could make things a lot easier just simply turning that on there uh ads behavior personally i feel like if you are a controller player you're gonna want this on hold it's just gonna be more basic and default like in standard cod if you're a touchscreen player though you just have to press the ads button once and you'd stay in ads until you press it again that's probably a lot more convenient for newer uh touchscreen players more advanced touchscreen players might like the hold so you have a little bit more control over that you don't have to press the screen more than once with that uh focus behavior i do have on toggle auto melee i don't have this on on, but if you do want it on uh, anyone that's inside of your melee range it'll automatically do that melee animation especially if you're running gun play style you play a little bit more aggressive i just find that to be a little bit too intrusive to your gameplay and it's probably going to mess you up in some cases if you're trying to like fire with an smg or a shot in your barrel stuffing right sprinting door bash you absolutely want that on just makes it easier to navigate through buildings and through doors force reload sprints only so with this basically when you have this on reloading can be interrupted by sprinting only if you're not sprinting you're strafing you're doing anything else the reload will be fully uh you know it'll go through the animation in full basically there but if you want to cancel reload you can do it with sprint i don't have force equip armor on but i do have equip all armor plates on that's basically the apply all you press the button once it should give you all your armor however this uh the setting is kind of really buggy right now it doesn't work all the time and then aim assist if you're on controller or touch screen you definitely want that on because it's pretty powerful in this game especially on controller like i'm not gonna lie it's pretty broken vehicle controls i just have on arrows now for the gyroscope these are really specific settings if you're into the gyro aiming that's its own niche thing and if you are turning this on you probably you already know what you're doing with that i'm not gonna lie let me scroll back down to where we were on our menu i don't have invert look on if that's your style of play i mean go for it personally i can't do any of that so i leave that on off outlines i all leave on on there pretty standard stuff there we then get into our interface settings here we'll scroll all the way up to the top so left fire display i always keep that on on just so you can obviously see when you're firing fire buttons while auto fire i keep on off for showing the ammo i keep that as separated if you have this on integrated the ammo counter will be inside the weapon slots in battle royale i like to have it as its own separate thing so i can adjust the size of that where it is and it's just easier to see for me personally that's more of a preference based thing though hit marker display i obviously keep that on on i keep it on a normal size with the basic transparency 
auto sprint lock i keep that on floating if you were to turn that off you can't trigger the auto sprint with just the movement joystick i just think it's more natural with floating there change stance to keep that on split of course fixed joystick off and then also the invert camera again is off there i'm not sure why there's direct uh different setups for the invert there but it is what it is for alerts i keep the resupply and the reload cancel alerts on on tool tips i don't really need those i don't think most people want those popping up it can be kind of obnoxious so i keep those off as well and then sensitivity here admittedly haven't done too much customization with this i kind of just left it as the default just to get the natural feel of it down especially if you're a newer mobile player but the touchscreen sensitivity here i'd recommend seeing how this feels if it's too fast you know adjust it lower adjust it higher uh for whatever you need but then slowly make fine tunes over time as you get more and more comfortable there for my controller settings i play on a 6.4 personally i feel like that is a nice middle ground for the frames i'm getting for the size of the screen and the input delay that you have like with the bluetooth controller 6.4 is pretty accurate there and aim assist does a lot of work for you in the game as i mentioned earlier you can also adjust your ads sensitivities as well which is pretty convenient i just bumped something up that i didn't mean to bump up let's see if i can scroll down correctly without actually uh you know going crazy with my sense here what you do want to do though is adjust your ads per zoom depending on the type of scopes you're using so lower zooms especially on mobile games or like in this uh instance for playing with bluetooth controller and there's a slight delay i keep my lower zooms at a lower sensitivity than the higher zooms slightly faster so it's a little bit more uh you know accurate and precise over long distances like if you're using a high zoom sniper scope you want that slightly faster sensitivity so that you can keep up with enemy targets moving over long distances or in like the mid-range if you have a high zoom scope you don't want it to be too slow and you then you can't keep up with a player so i just gradually increase that over time i do keep the sensitivity timing on instant there that way the second i am aiming down sights my sensitivity sensitivity multiplier is automatically going right into that as far as graphic settings goes this again is going to be very dependent on your device and its capabilities here now as far as visual quality goes high and peak are the main options here now like i said i'm playing on an ipad 12.9 inch i'm pretty sure it's an m2 drive on here uh with peak settings the game looks great i did notice though that go by going down to high the game visually at least in my opinion did not look all that different but i felt like i was getting a much smoother and much more consistent frame rate playing on high this again though is going to be very device specific if you have an older or a newer device it's going to make a big difference playing on high versus peak in terms of your frames uh, i would go for the frame rate performance over battery unless you're just playing on the go you might want to be a little bit more conscious of your phone's health or your tablet's health there in terms of its battery percentage uh but if you're playing you know plugged in and it's charging or whatever of course go for frame rate uh, allow high res uh streaming i keep that on on for frame rate i go for uncapped especially on a high just to make sure i'm getting a nice high refresh rate it feels much smoother and a lot twitchier which i like the responsiveness feels good however if you're on a device that might not get the greatest frames ever or if you just want to keep it uh you know from overheating or anything just simply playing it on 60 there is going to be a lot more consistent you won't have to worry about your uh you know ipad or your uh tablets or whatever your phone's overheating or anything there Feel the view, I crank all the way up to 90. You wanna be able to see as much as you can across your screen, especially on mobile where you've got a much smaller screen for the most part, that's gonna be pretty clutch as well. Now, audio settings, I haven't adjusted too much here because there's just a lot of volume specific stuff. You can turn things up or down if it's too loud for you, but your master game volume, obviously set that to where you can hear the game nicely. Gameplay music, this does not matter. This is gonna give you, okay, we're out of the settings menu. Now I gotta go all the way back in. For gameplay music, there's nothing important you're getting out of the music setting here. If you turn that to zero, you're you're not going to miss out on any uh, amount of information whatsoever so i don't really care about that dialogue volume i do like to have this up for pings and uh stuff like that effects volume is also going to be up there footsteps gunshots everything like that you're going to want to have that turned up high as well if you want the jug music on go for it if you want it off turn it off not going to be a big deal there the message of the day volume if you don't want that popping up when the game opens you can turn that down as well voice chat if you want to have that on leave it on all preference and then the remainder of the settings here really don't matter the main three are controls graphics and audio and now that we've gone through everything with those that effectively wraps things up if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button turn on those post notifications that way you can always guarantee you're up to date with everything going on in cod but once again thanks so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out